Greetings, brethren. I just want to cover um, what uh, Edward says about uh, the eternal sonship and what uh, this whole dispute uh, between Edward and Kevin Zacher. Um, I just want to cover that. Um, but I forgot about this one little piece of information I wanted to share with you. In my last video, I forgot this, and I just want to show you something. Is the truth. And when he denies him being the eternal son of God and then calls it Catholic and lies to all of you, when really it's not Catholic at all, it's Bible, then he has stopped his ears to the truth. I mean, I never really heard it. Edward say that the eternal sonship doctrine is Catholic. I mean, I don't know if anybody else heard heard about that, but I don't. I never did. But anyways, um, you see, eternal sonship uh, dispute started over a comment on this video. On September twentieth, two thousand eighteen, I'm, I'm uh, estimating. About this comma right here. Romans ten thirteen is a cancer to the gospel. And that's what uh, the original comment. That's why he's re Kevin Zach was responding to that comment. And, yeah, they've been going on, they've been going back and forth for the longest time now over eternal begotten and the, the, uh, the issue, one thinks about the definition of begotten and the different things. And, um... So, um, let's see. Hold on. So this is a video a couple of days after that. Kevin Zachary Lisa put up court uh with PF one two three says uh says Romans said thirteen is a cancer. <laughs> when he says Romans said thirteen is a cancer, it's a gospel. And he says, Only a servant of Satan would say a precious verse of Holy Scripture is a cancer to the gospel. Oh, well it's not part of the gospel. When it's not part of the gospel, it's a cancer to the gospel. Because people are, are, mis are placing it in the gospel when it doesn't have, has no business being in the gospel. It's the point, you know. And then, of course, you got people in there, you know, who actually who don't take the time to actually ask me about it. Faith alone, Christ alone. You know, and you make comment there. And, uh, uh, same old guys, you know. Wayne Crook, of course, Jesus versus the world, uh, the world, uh, it's exposing the walls, he asked me about it, I let him know about it, so I'll see if he, what he does, he says, if this is correct, I won't sub, I won't sub from his, honestly, this has shocked me, we are the light, Timothy says, we should have said most people's interpretation of it is a cancer, well, I said, when I say it's a cancer to the gospel, it means there's no business being in the gospel, but it's not part of the gospel. That's it, simple. Most of that third thing is not part of the gospel. So people using it as part of the gospel are misusing the verse. And therefore, it has become a cancer to the gospel. Not before any fourth of its own. The verse is fine. <laughs> and it and we well, well, get the right meaning of it. But people are misusing the verse. It's a cancer to the gospel. Because just like well, Revelation 3.20, you know, 
rest of your heart, any verse you misuse or repent and be baptized. Acts 2.38. Use that as part of your gospel presentation. It's a cancer to it. Verses that have no business in the gospel are cancers to the gospel. Because they're being wrested out of context and being misused as part of the gospel. Now, what Kevin Zacker wants you to believe, he's got a 30 minute video on there. Same thing Robert Wood. Anyways. So he responded. Couple days, and this is in September, a year ago. So, he already said about what he meant. Good afternoon, and today we'll begin looking at the Kevin Zacker video. It's mirrored on uh, Wayne Cook's channel. So, it's really Wayne Cook's uh, channel, he's mirroring uh, Zacker. Uh, Zacker is a little puppet. <laughs> Got this year. Over angels meeting, four angels meeting with women. With women. Anyways, that's part of uh, going back and forth. There's disputes of different, different idea, uh, different uh, doctrines and stuff. That's part of it. But it's probably been going back and forth for years. I don't know, but. Um, Good afternoon, it seems a video was put up uh, uh, Kevin, by Kevin Zacker a while back dealing with my comment, dealing with Romans 10.13 saying it was a cancer to the gospel <clears throat> and this video was we put up by this individual Authorized King James Version 1611. Uh, this is the same guy, I believe, rejects the Trinity. So he's mirroring in this video. Now, the fact is, it's people taking Romans 10 13 is part of the gospel. It's not part of the gospel. Prayer is not part of the gospel. Would you say uh, Acts 2.38 is part of the gospel? But people who are using 2.38 being baptized, baptized for the gospel, Acts 38 becomes a cancer to the gospel because it's not the gospel. These guys are going to get all sanctimonious here. See, it's been saying the same thing, what he means, um, but the eternal begotten thing, um, the sonship, I don't know, he, the issue is between what he's known as the word or the son, and, um, about the issue about internally begotten, I mean, I don't really know, but I, I would say he's begotten in time when he's born of the virgin, virgin, um, but eternally begotten, you know, it's proceeded forth, generated, born, uh, procreate. I mean, Jesus was just as God was the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Jesus was the same in eternity past. So. If a point of time in eternity passed, that he be the uh, father begetted the son in eternity past before creation, then he's not the same. At one point of time, he had a beginning, unless before. Uh, they started time or something, you know, before creation or something. But as God being, not having a beginning and not having an end, 
Jesus had to have not beginning and be, and uh, a, not have a beginning and not have an end to be God. So eternally begotten doesn't make sense somewhat. I would say, yeah, 